Hello, everybody. Welcome once again to another episode of the Tigers Baseball Podcast. I'm your host, Chris Schulte, and this is another off-season edition. Um, every season is an off-season uh, when you're me. Anyway, so we're going to get to this real quick. Let's go ahead and get into the injury report. Um, nothing really major going on. Casey Mize, Matt Manning, Alex Fiedo all had or all are doing uh, throwing progressions. Uh, Casey Mize, of course, the big deal because he's recovering from Tommy John surgery and back surgery that he had uh, last June, uh, June of 2022. And uh, he's on the road to recovery from those. Um, he's basically where he should be in his rehab process. Uh, Matt Manning, of course, with the broken foot again. And uh, Alex Fieto with the fingernail issue <clears throat> issue again. Um, but they're both, they're all where they should be in their progressions. Um, we have not really seen much of anybody else. Um, of course, <clears throat> of course the Tigers, um, not re-signing Matt, Matthew Boyd. He went to free agency. Jose Cisnero went to free agency. Um, and, uh, we're going to go into the, the reason I brought up Matt Boyd is because he uh, had Tommy John surgery as well. So he's on the, technically that's an injury update. Uh, so Jose Cisnero, of course, electing free agency leads us into um, the main topic of discussion today, which is the opt outs that have happened. Um, there were only two that were po uh, possible opt, uh, opt outs. And uh, there was actually a, th a third option situation but um that was a club option not a player option and um <clears throat> the big news of course eduardo rodriguez doing what everybody expected him to do and not taking very long in making that decision either so the world series ended on november the 2nd and uh eduardo rodriguez opted out on november 4th he had five days to do it he only took two so that's done He's a free agent. He can come back on a different contract to the Tigers. Um, should they choose to bring him back? Should he choose to want to come back? I'm pretty sure they'll want him back, but whether or not they get what they want is, is a whole different story. Uh, so he is, is um, no longer, well, he's no longer a Tiger at the moment. What happens to him is still up in the air as far as it goes. Uh, no free agents have signed yet. I don't know if there's a, a specific period that has to be um, adhered to, but I know if it was only five days after the World Series, that's already been passed by at least four or five days at the recording of this podcast. This podcast being recorded on Monday, November 13th, 2023. So... Rodriguez is gone. Baez is still here. We figured that was going to happen. Javi Baez, of course, having two absolutely dreadful years in Detroit. And we've got four more to think about because his contract is a six year deal. And he said he decided, you know what, let's let's get paid. I wouldn't get paid on the free agent market what I'm getting paid now. So let's get paid. So we've got four more years of Javi, Javi Baez. And uh, hopefully he turns things around, but, you know, we'll see. Um, probably won't turn things around until 2026 when his option or when his uh, contract is out. It's his contract year then. Um, so we'll see. It just, it just, it remains to be seen, but um, we're stuck with him. And as a fan, I'm disappointed. Um. You know, there's a lot of things that Alavila did as a general manager that people will point at and say those were successful. Uh, Resolson, the trade for Resolson, for for example, the drafting of Spencer Torkelson, the drafting of Riley Green, uh, the drafting of Tarek Skubal. Um, but for every Riley Green and Spencer Torkelson and Tarek Skubal, there's a Jordan Zimmerman and a uh, Miguel Cabrera. Although that was a Dombrowski deal, but still. Um, there's a Miguel Cabrera and a Jordan Zimmerman and a Javi Baez and an Eduardo Rodriguez, you know, his, his contract, let him go. Alavila signed him to a deal that allowed him to leave instead of locking him up 
it was a player friendly deal and and that's that's a problem i mean yes you have to have some player friendly deals on a team to make it work but um if this is some somebody that you were going to build around having a player friendly deal like that is just not it's just not feasible it's not it's not a good thing a good way to go and um you know i will point to all sorts of his failures i'll point to his successes but uh, I'll point to his failures as well. Now, what the Tigers did do is pick up the club option for Carson Kelly. He had a club option for, I want to say, around $3 million. Uh, they went ahead and picked that up. He's going to be Jake Rogers' backup. And, um, you know, I really don't have a problem with that. You're Don- if you're Donnie Sands, you have a problem with it. If you're Dylan Dingler, you have a problem with it. If you're Eric uh, Josh Crouch, you have a problem with it. Eric Crouch, of course, is a football player for Nebraska, former football player for Nebraska. Uh, if you're one of those guys, yeah, you got an issue with it because you're a catcher in the organization and you're stuck because Jake Rogers isn't going anywhere, and of course, for the next year at least, Josh uh, Carson Kelly isn't going anywhere either. However, from a next man up standpoint, you got to prepare because. Carson Kelly is injury prone, big time injury prone. And um, you need to be ready. You need to be able to say, you know what? I may be stuck, but in that same respect, I'm not. Because if this guy gets hurt, I need to be ready to come up and help the big club. And uh, I think what Detroit's going to be looking for in spring training next year is a guy who is going to be able to handle something in the minor handle his business in the minors well enough to where if Carson Kelly or Jake Rogers get hurt long term they can bring this guy up and know that the team is going to be okay that they're not going to miss a step so uh, that is something that they need to look into um and now we're going to get into a real quick trade that I I look when dealing with Scott Harris, you need to learn not to think, not to try to think like Scott Harris, because I don't think anybody thinks like Scott Harris does. I did not see Detroit trading a young, low level pitching prospect for a 35 year old with one more year left on his deal. And A guy who offensively gave you decent numbers, but wasn't fantastic. I don't dislike Mark Canna. And Detroit really gave up next to nothing to get him because Blake Holt was sort of, I mean, he was okay, but Detroit has plenty of pitching, uh, plenty of right-handed arms in the bullpen that in, in, in the minors that throw hard and have relatively decent command of the strike zone. Not pinpoint command, but eh, okay. What I have a problem with is, I guess in a way it's a like for like deal, except for the fact that Mark Canna is 35, Blake Holt is in his early 20s. Now I know you're not going to get an, a right-handed bat that's in his early tw- in, his, in his early twenties, especially from the outfield standpoint. Who's going to hit you thirty home runs and hit three hundred and drive in a hundred runs every year? Mark Canna's not that guy either. At thirty-five, he hit two sixty-two last year. He had eleven homers, um, drove in something like seventy or eighty runs. So he's not going to give you a huge boost to your offense. Really all Scott Harris did here is not hurt the offense. He didn't make it any better. Now, a lot of people will sit there and say, oh, well, Miguel Cabrera is gone. So now that he's gone, they need to find somebody that's going to replace him. And and by the numbers, Mark Canna is a better hitter than, than Miguel Cabrera was last year. Maybe that's true. But, there's a presence and a leadership quality that you're not going to replace in Miguel Cabrera. 
you could have 10 Mark Cannas on your team, they would not equal one Miguel Cabrera when it comes to leadership and, and clubhouse presence. And Detroit's going to have to move on from that. Detroit's going to have to find a different, the clubhouse is going to have to find a different type of leadership and a different type of vibe uh, starting next year without Miguel Cabrera there. And that's fine. I just don't see how the offense is better with a guy that hit 260 and had 11 home runs when they need a guy that's going to hit you hit 260 and hit you 20 or 30 home runs. So from that standpoint, I don't know how he's fixed things. I don't know what this offense is going to be, if it's going to be any different next year. There's still a lot of moves that need to be made in the offseason. There's still a lot of trades that need to be made. There's free agent signings, things of that nature. I don't see Detroit signing any big free agents. I would like to see them go after Matt Chapman. And if you look at Jim Bowden's um, top 40 free agents or whatever it is, he's got the Tigers listed as a possible landing spot for Matt Chapman. I don't see that happening because... I don't think Chris Illich is going to let Scott Harris and Jeff Greenberg spend the money that they need to spend to get Matt Chapman here. But really, that's the biggest free agent hitter that's out there. There's a couple of pretty decent pitchers. Aaron Nola's one of them. Blake Snell's another. But I don't see I don't see Detroit signing either one of those either. Well, Scott Her- or Scott Jim Bowden seems to think that Aaron Nola would fit with Detroit. I think, but I don't see it happening. So I think, from a starting pitching standpoint, your rotation next year is going to be set unless they trade Tarek Skubal. But ultimately, it's going to be Skubal, Olson, probably Mize. Manning and Sawyer Gibson Long, which is fine. I can live with that. I could even live with Scooble, Olsen, Mize, Gibson, Long, Manning, if you want to go first through fifth and put them as, you know, one, two, three, four, five. And yes, I've got Reese Olsen ahead of Casey Mize, only because Casey Mize hasn't been on a mound in two years and he hasn't had um, the game experience that that Reese Olsen has. And he also doesn't know what his arm is going to give him next year. He still needs to, he may learn have to relearn how to pitch, which Reese Olsen is ahead of him right now in that, at that, in that regard. So, I don't see Joey Wentz in the in the rota- in the opening rotation. I don't see Alex Fiedo in the opening rotation. Do I see them as bullpen pieces? Possibly. But I don't see them as starting as as members of the starting rotation and I don't think Detroit goes out and gets a big time starter. If they get a starter if they can't re-sign Eduardo Rodriguez and they sign somebody else, it's going to be a, a, a mid-level starter to a, to a low-level starter. It's going to be a, a three to a five. It's not going to be an ace. They're just not going to do it. So with that, we're going to cut this episode off. Uh, there's not a lot going on. Um, congratulations to Jason Bonetti, who is now the new broadcaster for the Tigers on the TV side. I read an article yesterday that said, that with Jason Benetti on the TV side and Dan Dickerson on the radio side, Detroit has arguably one of the best play-by-play duos in all of baseball. I haven't seen Benetti much on TV, but I've seen, I've heard Dan Dickerson on a daily basis, and I agree from the from the radio side, Dickerson is one of the best. I'll be interested to see who they sign or not sign, but who they bring in to fill Jim Price's spot in the broadcast booth, or if they're just going to keep it the way that it is with. Bobby Scales doing a majority of the road games and Cameron Maven and Craig Monroe and Andy Dirks filling in the rest of the time. I would rather see them bring in Andy Dirks full time. I don't mind Cameron Maven. Craig Monroe's okay. Bobby Scales is meh. 
But really, Andy Dirks brings a lot to the broadcast booth that I really like to see and like to hear. So that's my personal opinion. Um, I don't think anybody's going to care. So with that, I want to thank Anchor for distributing the podcast. You can catch the podcast on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. Or you can catch us on YouTube, youtube.com forward slash at TV podcast. We're on Mastodon. TV podcast at tweezcake.social. That's T W E E S E cake.social. We're on Twitter at Podcast Tigers. And where you can email the show, Tigers Baseball Podcast at gmail.com. It's the world's longest email address. I'm proud of that. Until next time, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for listening and go Tigers.